My name is Mia D. Bethune. I'm an art therapist and art therapy instructor at NYU Steinhardt School here in New York City. I know many of you are already making face masks and there are lots of videos out there to show you how to do that and that's really wonderful. Three weeks ago, I started making these face shields. As you can see, they covered the entire face. My sister-in-law, who's a doctor in Boston, said that there weren't enough of them to go around and doctors and medical professionals really need them. My goal is to teach you how to make them using the PDF from Providence Hospital in Seattle. It's a three-part PDF that shows you the parts that you need, the process, and a diagram on the third page that shows you how to make a template. They're really easy to make. I've made 60 myself and have distributed them to various hospitals in the New York City area. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you have a completely clean working area. I like to use a cutting mat and I spray it down with Clorox and water to make sure it's completely clean and sanitary. Usually I wear a mask to make these and you should too. But for the purposes of demonstration, I'm not going to wear it. It's recommended that you also wear some gloves, but I find it's very difficult to do this fine detailed work, especially using tape, if you have the gloves on. So you do a big glob of Purell, and then you wipe your hands until it evaporates. Making sure you get all your fingernails. So now I'd like to show you what supplies you need to have on hand. You'll need a sharp pair of long bladed scissors. You'll need a Sharpie. You'll need a regular stapler, a ruler, a 10 by one inch strip of paper, some upholstery foam cut into one by 10 inch strips, some elastic one by 14 inches, and you'll need double sided tape. You'll also need marine grade vinyl. I was able to get 10 yards of it on Amazon. The specifications call for anything from 16 to 20 gauge. This is 20 gauge. So it came in a large batch and I had to cut it down. And I did that by using a template which I created from the PDF which I described earlier. Ignore this eye window at the moment. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I took the 10 yards and cut it into 13 and a half by 12 rectangles. Imagine that this is an uncut 13 and a half by 12 rectangle. And I take my template and I line it up with the 12 inch side of the rectangle. And I take my Sharpie and I mark that curved edge on the bottom. And then I just cut it out with scissors. But obviously I've done that already. The next step is to cut your tape. I use the one by 10 inch piece of paper for this purpose. Lining up the paper with where the tape ended and my Sharpie to mark off the 10 inches. Once I have the tape, it's sticky on one side and with green paper on the other. I line up my piece of plastic so that I can see one half inch from the top and one inch on either side using my cutting mat. And I place the plastic down and press it so that it's completely stuck on there. Then I remove the paper. I take one of my cut pieces of foam and I press that down onto the tape using my palms to make sure it's really stuck on there. Then you take one of your pieces of elastic and you tuck about three quarters of an inch onto what will be the front of the mask and line it up with that piece of foam. Holding that in place, you can reach for your stapler and you will staple 
once. Twice. And I like to give it one more for good measure. Then you turn it around and take the other side tucking another three quarters of an inch and this will be a little bit more difficult because the elastic is stretching now and you do one and then a second and I like to give it that third so it's nice and strong and if it starts to curve up that's okay you want the mask to curve around the face and that elastic should be nice and strong. It's a nice strong fit. The last step is making sure the shield is completely clean before you pack it up for delivery. I would have my gloves on for the entire process but especially for this last part. You want to spray down the mask and take a clean paper towel and wipe it down, including the elastic and the foam. The Clorox may yellow the foam a little, but that's okay. You turn it over and do the other side. Then I make sure I have a clean area to the side of my workspace where I can lay down the finished products and make them ready for delivery. It might be hard to find the marine grade vinyl right now, so I want to show you another solution using report covers that you can get from Staples. This is a 9.5 by 11 transparent file from Staples. You can also use transparent report covers. I have already cut the sides of this one, and I just need to cut the tab at the top. So I'll take my scissor, and I'll do that now. The goal is to create a rectangle. And you might notice that this piece of plastic is not quite as wide as your template. That's okay. It's only about an inch short and you're going to line your template up so that it's even over the rectangle. You'll also notice that it's quite a bit longer than your template. That's okay too. You're going to mark your plastic using the template in the Sharpie. Then you're going to cut on that curved line just the same way you do with the marine grade vinyl. I make sure that the fold in the file folder or report cover is at the bottom of the shield for obvious reasons. You'll also notice that this piece of plastic is not as transparent as the marine grade vinyl. You will need to cut out an eye hole. I created a template that's two inches on either side and four inches in the middle, creating a shape that fits perfectly over your eyes. I'm going to place that at the top of the mask, about an inch from the top, and two inches from either side. I'll take my Sharpie. and mark that out. These Sharpie marks can be cleaned with alcohol if you want your mask to be really pretty. Then I fold this mask, or shield rather, not so it makes a crease but just enough so that I can get in to begin cutting that around. So you can see there's a good space for someone to look through. Then I take 
another more transparent material, and it's not marine grade plastic or vinyl. If you have a scrap of marine grade vinyl left over, that's wonderful. But if you don't, you can use this more cellophane-like material that might be found in an art supply store or even a floral shop. This material isn't as strong as the report cover, so we're going to double up to make sure it's strong enough. I'll place my template down on the clear mylar or plastic. And I'm going to mark a half an inch out from the template all the way around. Just enough so that you have some overlap. Then I'm going to take my scissors and cut out those two pieces of clear mylar or plastic. Okay, and we're ready to go. And the next step is to tape these down onto the shield. For this purpose, I use clear packing tape. This process is very difficult to do wearing gloves. So I generally don't and then just clean up very well afterwards. I cut three inch strips and place one on each end Then I turn the mask over and I take the second piece and do the same thing. So you get the idea. You're sealing both pieces of this clear plastic all the way around on both sides. And then this face shield is much clearer to see through. From there you build it the same way that you built the other one, using your tape, your foam, your elastic, and finishing up with a good dose of Clorox and water before you deliver to the hospital. Thank you for your time. As you can see, these shields are not that hard to make. And I know that making them over the last month, which has been a crazy time, has just given me so much meaning and purpose. I know so many people working in the medical field and the front line, and I know that I'm making something that is truly helping them. And you can do that too.